Hey everyone, it's Kyle again. I hope you've been having a great day. Today's video will be about putting the slope and y-intercept into context. Context by definition is the set of circumstances or the situation surrounding an event, or in our case, surrounding a certain piece of information. For example, you can understand the statement three inches in four days by itself, but without any context, it doesn't really mean anything. Three inches of what? Four days since when? When we contextualize the information, we can start to give it meaning. If we specify that Kyle planted seeds for a garden that he's starting and in four days, the saplings grew an average of three inches tall, we can start to understand what the data is about, making it actually mean something. When you have graphs and tables, the same need for context applies. A table without labels or a graph without its axes labeled gives you the data, but they don't actually mean anything, they're just numbers. When we explain the context of a linear graph, table, or equation, the slope represents the increase or decrease of whatever the y variable represents for every increase of whatever the x variable represents. You can use phrases like for each or per instead of for every, um, but just make sure to look out for any of these three phrases in any word problems that you come across in the future, as these can indicate the slope in those problems. The y-intercept is also an important piece of context, and while it's been defined to you previously as the y-value when x equals zero, when put into context, you can sort of think of it as a starting point. When describing the y-intercept, though, you do just have to make sure to discuss what it means for the x-value to equal zero, or what it means for the y-value to be that quote-unquote starting point. Alrighty, let's move on to those really fun practice problems now. Pause the video here and try to contextualize for yourself, and I'll come back to explain when you're done. Alrighty, welcome back. Let's start reviewing. Since all three problems here are graphs, determining what the x and y variables represent is actually quite easy, since they're labeled on the axes. For number one, x is the number of years since planting the tree and y is the height of that tree. Now let's find the slope. Our change in height is 10 feet and our change in years is five years. So our slope simplified is two feet per year. To put that in a complete sentence, you could say something like, the slope represents that the tree is growing two feet every year. The y-intercept, four feet on the other hand, could be described as the tree was initially four feet tall when it was planted. Personally, it sometimes makes more sense to me to start with the y-intercept, since that's your quote unquote starting point in the context of things. So we're gonna try that for the next problem. So for number two, we're going to of course start by defining our variables again though. So we're shown that x is the number of months that have passed and y is the bank's balance in dollars. And now since it's a linear graph, it does technically depict the balance dropping every like second. But for imagination's sake, let's say that the balance is being withdrawn from every day to give us a pretty much linear graph. All right, so let's try with the, or let's try starting with the y-intercept this time. Our y-intercept is $170. And with the time passed being zero months, we can say something like the bank balance started at $170. Next, our slope. Another slope triangle will help us easily find that the slope is negative $20 per two months or negative $10 per month. When explaining the slope, remember that it is negative, so the bank balance is actually losing money. For this, we can say something like every month, the bank balance is decreasing by $10, or every month, a total of $10 is being withdrawn from the bank. Now, see if you can actually figure out how much on average is being withdrawn every day, if it's, say, September. And lastly, with problem three, we have a problem where X is the gallons of gas used and Y is the distance traveled in miles. 
As would make sense, the y-intercept is zero, meaning that without using any gas, this vehicle has traveled zero miles. If we determine our slope as well, 44 miles for every two gallons of gas used, or 22 miles per gallon, we can say that our slope represents that this vehicle can travel 22 miles per gallon of gas. And if the unit miles per gallon sounds familiar, it's a measurement of how fuel efficient a vehicle is. And now that we're done with the graphing problems, also keep in mind that in the future, you may also encounter word problems, which asks you to maybe find the slope or the y-intercept of problems or problems which ask you to graph some data. These word problems are the context. So all you need to do is invert these processes and look for keywords that might define variables, data points, or the slope. And with that, I bid you farewell. Have a great day, take care of yourself, and always ask questions if you have any.